Jai Gurudev, everyone. Jai Gurudev. What a wonderful time, you know, what a wonderful and great blessing to finish this wonderful lake festival with the Gayatri Yagna. You have been performing, singing, dancing, <laughs> drama. I mean, drama, and that's drama in your life I'm talking about. I mean, the play, singing the glory of God, and then finished with the Maha Gayatri Yagna. As you know very well, Gayatri is the one of the most prominent mantra. Of course, there's a lot of Sanskrit mantras, you know. But one of the top posts is called Raja Mantra, that is the Gayatri Mantra itself, you know. So all the mantra, all the prayer that we do, if we don't chant the Gayatri Mantra, the prayer is unfulfilled. But Gayatri hold a certain deepness in herself. I'm not talking Gayatri as a person, I'm talking Gayatri as the mantra itself, as you are well versed about it, you are well known about the power of mantra and also the meaning of the Gayatri mantra itself, you know. First we say Om Bhur Bhavasva, Om, that cosmic sound itself, that vibrate throughout, which is in reality who everything is, you know. Nothing it is not Om. Om is that cosmic sound which vibrate and create everything. Everything emerged from Om. And everything is Om. That's why Bhagavan said, I am Om. You may not uh, chant any mantra. If you just meditate in uh, chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita, you know, Dhyana Yoga, he explained about just by focusing upon the Om, by when you are sitting and then concentrating on your third eye, you chant inwardly that three syllabus Om. You know? So while you are chanting Om, that is Bhagawan Himself. There is no difference between Om and the Supreme Lord. Bhur Bhavatswaha, we are talking about that free state in itself, you know, that emotional state, that consciousness and the blissful state which you represent, that is your being, your divine being in that state, the fullness of that creation itself, you know, that emotional what you are here, and your consciousness while you are also, while you are advancing towards your spirituality, but the culminate part of it is that blissful state, you know. That is the free first word. Tat Savitu Varenyam Bhargodi Vashadi Mahi Dio Yona Prachodeyat. So that part we talk about just like the sun is rising. When the sun is rising, what happened? Darkness disappeared, no? So, light, you start to perceive the reality. But one stayed in the slumber of the darkness of the mind. When one is in the slumber of the darkness of the mind, one is not awake. One is still in a dormant state. But the devas, they, don't, they are not in that dormant state. The devas is in a state of awakening. When they are in the state of awakening, they perceived that divine reality at all times. So as long as man, it is in the state of the mind, their state in the state of dormant. A Gayatri Devi, that mantra, realized that one intellect have to be Enlighten 
No, in spite of uh, if you have an intellectual, you are very intellectual people, but your intellect doesn't mean that you are enlightened. Here we ask Gayatri Devi in that mantra itself, enlighten thy intellect. But by the intellect getting enlightened, only then the consciousness will reveal itself. But if the, co if the intellect is not enlightened, very difficult. Then the mind and the ego take over. So we ask Gayatri Mantra, when we are chanting the Gayatri Mantra, we are asking the Divine to purify our intellect. So that that divinity that we all hold may shine through. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, chapter 6, verse 3 of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan said, those who is just longing for perfection, action, work is the mean. Those sages who have already attained to that, tranquility is the mean. So when we see that verse itself, we see Bhagwan explaining that the state in itself, how one is moving. So he said, but what is the aim? The aim is to attain to the divine state. No? But it is in a progressive way. You don't climb a horse just by jumping on the horse. You are not Zoro. <laughs> huh? How you climb a horse? You stand next to the horse you know, and then you try to climb the saddle of the horse, isn't it? Is it called saddle? Yes. So, first you jump. If you, think, if you are small, like your great-grandfather here, it will not be able to go in one go on the top of it. So, oh, Napoleon, you know. <laughs> so, you were not Napoleon, you would not be able to go in one go. So, anybody who will stand next to a horse, you're not that tall to just jump over. Your leg is not that whole big to go over uh, of the horse back directly. What do you do? You put a small stool, and still you s jump one more, one time, two times. Do you think the horse is sitting there and looking at you? Say, yes, climb me. <laughs> eh? The horse will move. You uh, know? Look at the horse. Who likes somebody on their head like that, on their back? <laughs> eh? Nobody wants somebody on their back. I'm sure the horse also don't want anybody on their back. But yet, you want to ride the horse. So you try one time, two times, Three times your feet goes up, of course at the same time you're holding the saddle and try to climb over the horse. So as you climb over the horse, what happens? You throw your leg there. Once you are sitting up there, it's fine. So who is the master at that moment? The horse realizes that that is my master. I have to act according to how he wants it. According to what the master wants, I should act. So it's the same in that verse, Bhagavan is re re making one understand that those which is longing for perfection onto the outside, it's important to work for it. You have to make an effort. You can't expect it for it to just jump from heaven into your head. That doesn't happen, have never happened, and it will never happen. Those who just sit idly and thinking that, yes, without effort I will attain to that, no, it will never happen. So effort is important, and action. But those who have already attained to that stage, you know, there is no need. For them, they have to sit in the tranquility. They sit in 
that divine consciousness they are absorbed into that the mind is tame just like the horse you feed the horse nicely isn't it you love it they have a wonderful animal you know but when you are sitting on the horse you are the master you have to tame the horse the same horse that you you feed you have to whip it sometimes so when you become the master of the mind the mind will never want to change it need to be whipped then you have it under control without whipping that horse which is the mind <laughs> that device consciousness doesn't <laughs> reveal itself from it at all you are seeing that so you have to keep whipping until the horse is tame and start to listen to you once you are the horse start listening to you then you can guide the horse wherever you want you can gallop the horse wherever you want you know? because you are in control you are the master so we ask maha gayatri devi when you are chanting the gayatri mantra that we are not dictated by our mind but we are the master of such mind we are here to attain to that ultimate perfection we are here to attain to the, the lotus feet of the lord we are here to attain to that bliss of bhagwan himself we are not talking about us being blissful we are talking about that bliss which emanate from that awakening of him inside of us so you see throughout that journey everybody have a different understanding of that some people find try to find easy way no there's no such things as easy way you have to make your effort everywhere you know when traveling especially when pilgrimages are happening when i travel around but i what amazed me very much is how much close the mataji travel with you know you people i know not only mataji probably also sometimes i think it's a cultural things here you travel for traveling you have a set of clothes and then for dinner everybody change you know i very time very often i notice that you all change you know the, the person in front of the has a, just said we are late the people have been waiting for us please go directly to to dinner of course you see one kind of person there and then when you go for dinner which is literally coming out from the bus to the thing the big queue in front of the elevator where is everybody changing no thinking that they have to go in to the bathroom or the stuff and but when they come back they are a different person completely <laughs> you know because even for dinner the food in case the food gets scared <laughs> you know that you have to change so everything you keep changing your clothes uh, but yet what need to be changed is your mindset you know? that doesn't change is impressive you know but at the same time you see is what you know only if you doesn't know if you don't know about really that transformation how does it happen you know only way let's say somebody who love you dearly okay that person knows only one kind of way of expressing himself his love let's say your parent have told you in the morning you know in in your when you are at the home they always tell you my dear child wear this clothes no 
you look beautiful, they come, you come out like a princess or like a prince, you know, wearing the clothes in front of them. Oh, turning. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So every day there will be the one who choose your clothes for you to wear. No? So what you got accustomed to? You get accustomed to them doing that to you. So then you get married, you're all with your boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever. What would you expect? They also have to do the same thing. And if they don't do these things, what will be? Eh? Problem. You don't love me. Why? Because you don't choose my clothes. Eh? No, because they don't know. They just know a different way of loving. And that's what very often stuck into our mind. But it has to be in one way. And that's it. But you don't have that possibilities. You don't open the gate of possibilities to you. you know, when we are chanting the Gaitri Mantra, we are asking the Divine Mother to enlighten our intellect so that we can cross over all that limitation. But the gate of possibilities open up. But we may awake in that Divine Glory. Not only in one specific, but in the multitude, the vastness, the wholeness itself. Only when we become whole in ourselves that we can realize the divine. If we are not whole in ourselves, we can't realize the divine. We can't even realize who we are. Then all stay only into the mind, even your knowledge stay only into the mind. There is no intellect there. There's only the mind which is governing. So you're still into the whole state. Now still, still trying to climb but not yet achieve that. So we ask when you're chanting, you know, you know the vibration which Gayatri Mantra create. You know, it's not only for the, you know, I forgot to say, I should have tell, put some water around, let it get energized, you know. But yet, I was thinking, your body is full of water. Now, 72% of your body is water. So while chanting the Gayatri Mantra itself, your whole vibration, your whole DNA, or whatever inside, <laughs> what do you call? Yes. Is of course, vibrating the Gayatri Mantra. You know. And not only this, all which is in nature, you know, which is around, I'm sure the fishes in the lake, the trees, the plant, the people which, you, even if they don't want to hear the, the mantra that you were making so much noise at night, <laughs> they will also profit in a positive way. That is very good. You have done the seva for them also, you see. So, willingly or unwillingly, you have chanted the Gayatri Mantra. Willingly and unwillingly, people who have listened to it have profit from it. Yeah. So you have rendered service to nature itself. You know, you have asked the divine to help. Hopefully, he will. Uh, she will enlighten the German mind also, and he will make them a bit soft. Soft. It would be nice. We pray for that. No? No, well, I'm here. Care for Germany. So, when we go to Italy, we pray for Italian. Ah, Jagude, all of you. I think I'm a bit tired right now. Go to bed. Ah, yes, there's a shake